Welcome back to Kivumbi 2017. Now with the new and second term governors now sworn in, it is all systems go for another five years of county governments under devolution. In our faster studio discussion this morning, we look at the impact of devolution so far, why it is working for some and not working for others, and some obvious teething problems that new governors should look out for. Well, in studio to help drive this conversation is political researcher Brian Aguna and governance expert Dr. Solomon Njenga gentlemen welcome to the early morning edition of Kivumbi 2017. Uh, let me begin with you Dr. Njenga. A mm. question we're asking our viewers this morning. Mm. This is the second term of devolution. Right. How have you benefited from devolution personally? Well um, thank you so much and uh, I as an electorate I must say that I have benefited in some way or the other because uh, we have uh, seen some improvement on the roads I remember those old days we used to park gumboots at the back of our you know, trunks mm -hmm. and, and when we are over, over, going over there. And now I'm not cutting them, especially when I'm going on uh, rural places and so forth. We have also seen some uh, development in terms of agriculture, in terms of uh, in the education sector. Mm -hmm. We have seen some few changes in the last five years. And uh, of course, those few challenges, those few changes have come with its own, their own challenges. Mm -hmm. But I must say, that we, for the last five years, uh, something have, has been done, mm -hmm. and uh, we cannot say that we cannot close our eyes and say that there is nothing that has been done. Yes, something has been done, but now for the next five years, it's now to perfect it. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, uh, Brian, just to get from you as a you know part of the electorate, how have you benefited personally from devolution? Uh, I can say, Michelle, that uh, devolution in the past uh, regimes of government, uh, the health sector was really an issue. But right now, if you look at counties like Kakamega mm -hmm. or even wherever I come from, Siaya, you see that these governors have really tried their level best mm -hmm. to equip these medical centers, to digitalize the platforms so that these women or these, our mothers, our kids down there can get the right medical care right at their doorsteps. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I'd really applaud devolution basically as an individual to the health systems. In and some country. government and some governors too have also tried on the agricultural aspect. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. of course, like I mentioned yeah. uh, when we began, the, yeah. the, the system of devolution seems to be working for some governors very well and uh, not so well for others. Now, every year, you know, for the past five years, uh, governors have had the devolution conference where they take stock of uh, how far devolution has come, what challenges the system of devolution is facing. Dr. Njenga, a lot mm -hmm. of governors, uh, they cited issues of uh, structural gaps within the, uh, the county government as well as issues of underfunding, right. uh, many saying these are also teething problems. And right. that's one phrase we heard a lot, uh, right. teething problems. Right. Can that remain an excuse in the second term of devolution? No, it cannot remain uh, a problem because the teething problem is always the teething problem. Mm -hmm. And it comes a time when uh, even a child uh, grows his or her teeth and uh, life goes on. Right. Uh, uh, we will excuse them. For the last five years, that is the teething problem. But I don't think whether we'll be talking about the teething problem now. Mm -hmm. However, there are still some things that we are still as, at a very low stages. Right. In terms of uh, legislation, in terms of policies, we saw, we, we saw people coming into an office where there they were, no, they were, they were no, no even an office. Mm -hmm. I remember in in, 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 in Nyeri, or rather in Moranga and, and, and Kiambu and other places, not like in Nairobi where the, the, the former um, count or rather um, um, offices, they knew where the offices will be. Right. I remember uh, uh, Kabogo fighting with the people and this is where the county offices will be. That, those are some of the teething problems. And even when they entered into the office, there were so many, they didn't know even how the policies would apply. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them even didn't know the constitution or their constitutional rights as governors. Mm -hmm. that, is a, that was a teething problem. You, uh, with, with the issue of national government, they, they didn't know even their location that they are supposed to be allocated. Of course, uh, after the enaction of the new constitution in 2010, when it came into power, or rather in the implementation in 2013, no one knew how this animal will look like. 
so in the next in the in the last five years, mm -hmm. yes, there were teething problems. But I don't think whether we should always be crying babies about the teething problems. Mm -hmm. In terms of the national government, I, I think the, 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 the willingness. I I I, ha I listened to the uh, is it yesterday or the day before uh, after uh, before yesterday when uh, former uh, Nairobi governor Kidero was mm -hmm. telling Sonko that now I I hope that the national government will release the seventy billion that we we, we owe we owe them the county government um uh, the government the county government of nairobi uh, uh, or, or rather owes the, uh, the national government mm -hmm. about over 70 billion mm -hmm. so uh, kidero was actually urging uh, the national government that in the presence of uh, president that i wish the, the, the these 70000 will be given in your era so that you can do the development now if you look at that Sonko was actually, uh, uh, Kidero was actually saying mm -hmm. that I had my own challenges with the national government mm -hmm. in terms of uh, disbursement of funds and also payment of so many other things right. uh, to amounting of 70, uh, 70, uh, over 70 billion. Now that you have come into power and you are now the, the, the you, you know, the, the current governor, I hope that the teething problem of the government and, and losing money Will, will not be an issue mm -hmm, again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we also need to do. Yeah. The, other, uh, the, the other thing is that some of these people, uh, they were just, uh, you, you remember we have about 50% of our governors have been shown the door. Mm -hmm. and, and really, uh, it, it tells you that uh, the electorate have now come up to maturity. Uh, on, on checking on, on, on what we, they want from their governors. Mm -hmm. This is what we want, and we don't, 50% are no longer there. And I think this is uh, the, the scorecard from the electorate, mm -hmm. that things will not be the same again. If you look at the Kajiado County, Kajiado County, uh, former Nkedienye, was chucked out mm -hmm. by the, the so-called the diaspora vote. Right. And really, uh, it's because of poor, uh, he, he decided to segregate people from, or other uh, uh, people from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. He only concentrated with the Maasai con concept. And it's good to concentrate with the tribal or alliances and so forth. But to what extent will they take you to the next level? I think this is a challenge. Right. Yeah. Um, Brian, as a political researcher, even as you comment on that, uh, on the second term of devolution, what is the expected performance of governors? Now that we have, uh, like he mentioned, about 50% of our governors having been hounded out. So we have this difference of, we have governors who are on their second term and we have governors who are coming in for the first time. How do we then gauge their performance on a level play, on a level platform? Uh, probably before I, could, I add on that, mm -hmm. let me just add on whatever he said there, ahead. that devolution probably governors never understood their roles. I, I'm trying to think that that's a big joke because we can attribute the failures today. These governors, they got in office, but almost all of these governors, they had corruption issues, mm -hmm. but none of them was brought to account. So we cannot hide behind saying, you know, the evolution was a new idea and the governors did not perform because they quite well did not understand okay, what was required of them. Mm -hmm. These people rec understood, they really understood, but when they got there, they fulfilled their own agendas instead of fulfilling the agendas mm -hmm. of the people. Mm -hmm. Now to your and question. Actually, just, just before you move on, you yes. know, as, as we explore this, yes. um, We've uh, had uh, several governors, including Mike Mbuvi Sonko, uh, who are now coming in from senator to governor. And we have about five of those, um, the likes of uh, Anyang Nyongo as well. And uh, these are you know, gentlemen who are uh, who had that uh, oversight role uh, of uh, the, you know, watch, watching over the governors in the first pioneer government. And like you mentioned, the issues of corruption are very well detailed in the Auditor General's uh, uh, report uh, in al almost all county governments. And we did see you know, some cases begin taking shape, but to date Kenyans don't know how far the prosecution of these cases have gone. Do you think these governors coming in as senators are going to make a difference now that they understood very well what the governors were doing before? Yes, I cannot, uh, we have to give them chance. Mm -hmm. We have to give them the time to prove because what I can attribute to these new senators like Anyang Nyongo, uh, Mike Mbuvi Sonko, sometimes, you know, Devolution, basically, was meant to bring uh, development mm -hmm. at the doorsteps. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that entailed engaging people in the participational process, asking people, what do you want as a people? Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But most of these governors did not do that. Now, other people were questioning, for, pardon me, but other people were questioning Michael Sonko's performance, whether 
he's even credible to become a governor. But mm -hmm. this guy, he beat all odds and he was the governor. And we have already started seeing him doing away with the garbage. Now, mm -hmm. issues with the garbage does not require that you call a community forum to ask them, people, do you think we should do away with the garbage? Mm -hmm. That is common sense. Right, you right. understand? I mean, so I think, I, think, I think let's give them time. Let us give them time. But I think they're likely to deliver. All right. Um, yeah. And I'd, I'd like to come back to the issue of governors. Let me hear from you, Dr. Mm. Jenga, mm. uh, because you seem to feel that uh, governors didn't really understand their role initially when they came in. But did all the elective positions within the county government understand their role? Because if you, you have one governor who you know, does not understand his role and is engaging in corruption, then you'd expect there is a senator who's going to put that in check. You'd expect right. there is uh, members of the county assembly. Mm. Did mm. all members within the county government understand their role? Right. Uh, I will say the understanding was uh, a bit below 50%, mm -hmm. in all levels, really, from the MCAs up. up. The, remember, this is the first time we are having MCAs. This, is the first time, this was the first time we were having uh, senators. Mm -hmm. This was the first time we were having... So all people there, or l rather li leaders, were actually uh, on their first timer. So in, in terms of uh, accrediting blame, uh, of course, there is where the back stops, mm -hmm. uh, and that was the governor, uh, governor's office, because actually, as the top, he is the one in responsible for uh, for everything. He is actually the the the, the, the chief. Uh, executive officer of the county, mm -hmm. and this is where the bank stops. But if you look at the issue of you, you ask um, my colleague Brian here whether these people, like uh, the five of them who are uh, uh, senators, mm -hmm. whether they will perform, I will say this they may not perform because uh, the issue of performance is not how much you have been in the system. It is how much you put your ears on the ground mm -hmm. and you listen to the needs of the people. And actually, they might, they might not, all of them, they might not even listen to the people because they will come up with the mentality, oh yes, we have been here before. We know what these guys need. And I think that might be their downfall. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, uh, the, the, the issue of uh, uh, national government and, and also the county government and also down there, the local, you'll also realize that the people at the ground level, the, down there, the electorate, they are asking, they are crying for services. They are crying for services. Mm -hmm. For me, it's not, the, it's not a matter of whether you have been here before or not. It's the issue of, uh, are you able to, are you a person of integrity? Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, are you, are you a person who is supposed to, uh, to say that tribe, I, I'm, I, I have a name that uh, resembles my tribe, mm -hmm. but I will go beyond this and really say that I, I will hire people who are from different tribes because areas or rather our counties have become almost 47 of them have become cosmopolitan. Go to Lud. I was in Lud. I, I was in Ludwa. Uh, you, you know, you realize that we have Kikuyu, we have Masai, we have Kambas, we have. So why can't you involve these people uh, so on, on the matters of development? Right. And I think this is some, something that our governors need to do. All right. Many a times we, they also suffer. Many of them, almost 99 percent, mm -hmm. they suffer from what I call Nairobi syndrome. Mm -hmm. when, when we elect them. We, we, we actually see them when they are being uh, sworn in, and after that... We see them on TV. We see them on TVs. We see them, uh, you, you know, go, uh, having uh, foreign trips and so forth, diaspora, diaspora trips, and they forget completely that they were chosen by the people. Some of them even change their numbers, phone numbers. You know, when they were, when they were campaigning, they, they, they distribute their numbers. And even, we even saw the president himself having a Facebook live mm -hmm. with, 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 with the electorate, with, with the citizens. My question is, will the president also come up with that policies where even now when he is seated in that throne of, uh, uh, seat of power, that he can engage his people or other citizens on, on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Without even campaigning. With, you know, without any attachment that I'm doing this so that you can elect me. Look at the way President went around all the 47 counties. Actually, that uh, you, you know, uh, election period was also a learning period mm -hmm. where we saw uh, the opposition, Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta and, the, and their camps transversing the entire country. You know, my question is, what happens when we elect them? Do they sit down? 
you know, we cannot reach them. All right. Yes. Uh, so the question then would be, how do we strengthen devolution moving forward and especially enhance service delivery? Because, Brian, you, mm. for example, mentioned health as one of the pros or benefits of devolution. Uh, but we've had a lot of industrial action in the past uh, few, uh, about two years or so, from nurses um, you know, to doctors. And uh, medical practitioners are blaming this lapse, especially when it comes to uh, you know, their pay, their uh, working environment, to the devolved system of governance. Why do you think that is so? And how then do we enhance service delivery going forward? I think that, first of all, our people need to be informed. Our people need to be educated. Mm -hmm. Mm. Our people need to be, they need to know what devolution really means. They need to know the mandate of the county governor. Mm -hmm. They need to know that funds from the county government must not only come from the national government. Mm -hmm. They need to know that the county governors have the key responsibility of doing what we call resource mobilization. Up to this point, there are counties that recorded zero investors at all. Mm -hmm. Zero investors at all. Mm -hmm. Because they had governors who did not really understand the dynamics of what it entails. So to our people, this problem, it's a continuous process. We won't solve it overnight. Mm -hmm. We won't solve it today. But we have to put in place uh, mechanisms that will educate our people, uh, reach out to them every day. Uh, the other day, the, uh, Anyang Nyongo was talking about the civil administration process of the devolution. Mm -hmm the communication channel, mm -hmm. you understand? Gone are the days where a county governor could come to a village and an aspirant stands up and say, Buona governor, I need a road to pass behind my backyard. Mm -hmm. Where the governor visits even a village, he should find an organized council of elders, you understand? Mm -hmm who will articulate the issues that are affecting them directly to the governor. So I think the communication, uh, the, the, the communication channel should be looked into. And allow me to backtrack for a second. <laughs> My brother spoke about MCAs. Now, MCAs, I'll, I, I, I'll agree, they never understood their mandate. Most of them went there and started doing business with the county government. You remember they wanted to impeach uh, uh, Wambora. Mm -hmm. They wanted to impeach uh, Kibwana. Mm -hmm. You understand? And the electorate are waking up in the essence that if you look at Makwini County, only one MCA was reelected. Mm -hmm. The others were shown dull. That is a symbol that our people are waking up mm -hmm. our, and our people are tired. And our people want devolution to really work for them. All right. And speaking of people being tired, we have comments coming in from our viewers this morning. Matara Innocent says, devolution is ensuring urban rural migration. Counties are offering immense opportunities. Mm. Although the corruption level is high, we are almost there. Okay. Let's focus on that issue of uh, corruption because... Um, you know, while many said, you know, we have a great devolved system of governance, we mm -hmm. also devolved corruption mm -hmm. uh, to these uh, different counties. Mm -hmm. How then, Dr. Njenga, do we ensure that uh, this wanton corruption is reduced? Let me say this. Uh, governor's position has two fronts. Mm -hmm. Governor's position has administrative fronts, mm -hmm. front and also political front. Now, if the failure of balancing either of, of, of both of them many a times brings a lot of confusion. Right. You realize that uh, in, in political, uh, there's a lot of high stake in terms of politics. Governors, when they, uh, when they assume the offices, mm -hmm. they, they tend to be more political, 90% political, than administrators. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you know, it's their time now to reward their friends. It is now their time to root. It's their time now to eat. And, and really, if you look at the issue of those who have been, those who have been so shown the door, it's purely because of corruption. Now that you have mentioned about corruption. Mm -hmm. I think what our, our governors need to know is that we are not begging for their services. Right. Electorate and the citizens, we are not begging for their services. We are not begging for sewerage, uh, you, you know, uh, water and sewage services. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we see Wamama Wasoko, you know, uh, they are struggling. All of us here goes to do some shopping here and there. But I, I always say this. If you want to check a good, or rather, if you want to, uh, to see a good governor, mm -hmm. just visit Mamuasoko. Down there, you realize that Kunamatope, even, when they are, even where they are selling their things, 
you know, it's very, they are shanties, you know. Look, look at the issue of the sewage services, sewage services. Look at the issue of cleanliness. We are not begging. Look at Nairobi. We are always struggling with the jam. Mm -hmm. I saw the other day uh, uh, Kidero closing some roads. The solution for jam in Nairobi is not closing j jam, uh, you, you know, removing roads. And roundabouts. It's actually, uh, or remo even removing the roundabout, it's actually a complete overhaul. Because if you look at uh, Nairobi 1960s, if you look at Nairobi 1990s, if you look at Nairobi 2000s, the roads, especially in Nairobi, the CBD, the roads are still the same. Look at the referral hospital in Nairobi, uh, Kenyatta Hospital, was built lo many years ago. We have not had even the second referral hospital in Nairobi City. The, the issue of jam, I, I, we saw the diversion of roads and so it's a complete overhaul mm -hmm. and, and, and really our governors should know that uh, public participation in almost everything of, of course my, my, my good friend here uh, talked about there, there are some areas that you don't have to uh, to involve the, the, the public mm -hmm. in terms of whether to remove the, uh, the garbage, the, the garbage. Right. Do, do I have to involve but also you also realize that we have also governors who have uh, 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 increased levies business levies Wanafinyelia, mwananchi wa kawaida. And really, this is their downfall. And, and be, simply because they are the CEOs, they, have, they, they call the shot. Mm -hmm. Look at the uh, signboards. All right. So then the question would be, how then do we en uh, uh, ensure accountability uh, in this uh, second system of devolution? Because public participation right. is one of the ways. But in right. many times, um, we've had uh, governors come and say, yes, there was reports of corruption in the county government, but it wasn't me. Who does the backstop at? Uh, the MCs, the members of the county assembly. Constitutionally, they are the ones to oversight the governor at their county level. Mm -hmm. But you see, they have not been doing that. Instead, they've been giving budgets. They're going for unnecessary trips in Israel. So to some point, our MCs are really failed us. Mm -hmm. And most of them, they need to be re-educated. I think then that would... Make beg the question, what is the role of an MCA? MCA yes. um, the electorate, uh, part of the electorate five years after devolution does not understand that very fact. Yes. Maybe bring us up to speed with that. All right. Basically, the role of the MCA uh, in this context, mm -hmm. we are talking about corruption in this context. Mm -hmm. The role of the MCA is to oversee that all the expenditures that the governor does are in accordance with whatever was laid in the DC. In, in, the in the county integrated uh, development plan, mm -hmm. we have that plan. You understand? Mm -hmm. We also have the annual plan of development. Mm -hmm. Now, it is the role of the MCAs to ensure that these plans are going in accordance to the agreement. You understand? Right. They, are, they, they are the ones to provide the checks and the balances constitutionally. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, young people in general, young people, the youth, I mean, it's not... You don't have to wait for someone to do for you what you can do for yourself. Mm -hmm. So when we traverse this county, we really talk to young people. We tell them, look, get out. Do a social audit. Bring these people to account. So we are not only limiting this to the MCAs, mm -hmm. but we also limit it to the general public. I could also call to this the attention of the media. Mm -hmm. The media, at some extent, gave us a blackout. We need to know how these governors are faring on in their respective 47 counties. Mm -hmm. We need to start seeing reports targeting each and every governor, mm -hmm. the progress and everything. And even the church itself, the church itself has also taken, they also have that moral authority to check on the leadership of the moment. Right, you understand? Right. Yes. So we are not going to, le to leave any stone unturned. It, what I'm trying to say is it is our responsibility as the media, as the general public, as civil servants. You understand? Mm -hmm. To, to benefit this. To benefit, yeah, yeah. Of course, the main role of devolution is to improve um, the living standards of Kenyans as citizens. And um, one of the comments here is saying uh, that, uh, you know, devolution has aided urban to rural migration. I don't know to what extent, though, uh, Dr. Njenga, you would say that has happened in the country and whether um, there really are more lucrative or, you know, opportunities outside the capital cities that mm -hmm. would attract Kenyans to leave the urban cities. I, I agree with that mm -hmm. to some extent. Mm -hmm. Because we were a uh, long time ago, we were coming to Nairobi to look for jobs. Right. 
I, and I agree with that statement, that now people are now not looking into Nairobi. They are now saying, where is the county offices? Mm -hmm. That is where we need to uh, place our, uh, uh, you, you know, our, 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 our CVs. Uh, I, 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 I was in, uh, one day I, I attended somewhere, I went somewhere on, uh, with a flight, a local flight, and I was shocked that on a Friday you cannot get, uh, you know, a, a seat because people have now, you, you, they are actually now coming back to Nairobi mm -hmm. because Nairobi has become their second home or else their, their first home was in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So they have gone back to the rural places. But I want to say this, that uh, in the Constitution, Chapter 11, this is where the devolution lies. And actually someone said, if you pull the Chapter 11 of the Constitution, then you are left with a shell. And I want to say this, that the, 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 uh, we, talked about, we talked about the, the empowerment. Mm -hmm. Our people need to be, to be empowered. I, I think also the expectations. Our, our electorate have a, have a lot of uh, expectations on what the governor and what the MCAs and what their leaders can deliver. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to tame that, that our governors also... Uh, works with works within the policy. Mm -hmm. we, are, we, we, we are not now. We, uh, we are now in in the area where uh, we are, uh, governors don't dish money, like uh, you, you, you know, like the former uh, yester years. We, we, and, but unfortunately, our people expect when the governor visit, he give them money. I think we need also to enlighten our people that cash and hard money doesn't doesn't help. Mm -hmm. You know, because that money, the government carries a lot of money so that they can give their people. But does it help? Mm -hmm. If you look at the MCAs, really, I will say this. The qualification of MCA and even what they are being paid doesn't match up. Mm -hmm. I remember people are complaining that it's even better to be an MCA than to be a lecturer. Mm -hmm. You, you, you know, and I think those are some of the checks and balances that we need to check. Or you, you, we need to implement that even the, the payment uh, grade, the, the payment variance uh, between the lecturers and or other other staff, the senior staffs, and also the MCAs and also other people. I think the SRC needed to standardize so many of these things because how comes that a teacher is paid this much, and a teacher is in school from eight to five? Every day, an MCA is paid a hundred times better than the teacher who only, who only goes to the, uh, at the county assembly two or three days in a week. Mm -hmm. and, right. and I think those are some of the things that we need to check mm -hmm. so that at least we can know this is the direction. And because we've seen the SRC just a month of a few weeks to the election doing that, uh, just that saying that That's political. in a bid to reduce uh, the public wage bill. And we'll get to that. But Brian, mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a couple of governors who've been re-elected, but we have a bunch, you know, a, a set of new governors coming in. And obviously the challenges that the two sets of governors will be facing will be rather different. What challenges are the new governors are uh, likely to face? Uh, first of all, the new governors, uh, it is their role to strengthen on the strength of the other governors. Mm -hmm. If you're just coming into office and you have just uh, replaced a predecessor who was doing quite well, mm -hmm. as a governor, it is your responsibility, first of all, to ensure that you work on whatever that governor had started for the benefit of the people. Mm -hmm. And you, you are also lucky because you were elected basically because of his weakness. So you have, you, you have a strength. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. You have a strength as the governor to now just work and totally give people a totally different dynamics as the other uh, governor. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the challenges that they are likely to, to see, I mean, let us, I tend to believe that governors, people voted in new governors because they believed in their policies. Mm -hmm. Each and every governor, when he was going to campaign, they had policies. They sold the policies. And people voted them. I want to believe in a free and fair democracy. Mm -hmm. People voted them because people believed in their policies. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, if a governor has policies, let him, let him work with the money allocated to him from the county, uh, with the, from the National Assemb mm -hmm. Assembly, or, or rather, let him marshal resource along the way. Challenges will come, of course, but at this point, it'd be too wrong to st start saying, okay, look, we expect that this thing is not going to take off because we expect a challenge from this end. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. Yeah, no. yeah. 
Of course, the bigger problem um, that I want you to address, uh, Dr. Njenga, mm. that uh, you know, governors have uh, cited year in, year out at the devolution conferences, we do not have enough funds. Earlier on, Brian said governors have the very uh, you know, responsibility to mobilize funds in mm. their counties. Mm. Do, uh, I is that a reason, uh, first of all, that uh, we should be hearing in the second term of devolution? And secondly, how then should matters funding or underfunding be addressed within the county? Let me say this. Uh, the issue of funding or underfunding funding, basically for me and to me, that's a concept of, of a crying baby. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, we know that there are so many, there's a lot of money circulating in the county. But the question is, what, are they, what have they done with the little they have so that they can show that we have this, we have used this, we have gotten this money, we have used this. Every year, I hear them uh, going to governors, going to this county, you are calling it conference, mm -hmm. you, you yes, know, the devolution, devolution conference. conference and so forth. Let me say this, that to me is a wastage of money. Mm -hmm. and, and really, because some of them even don't attend. I attended one here uh, somewhere, and 50% of the governors, they attended on the day one. And, and by, 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 by two, they were not there. The, the, you, you know, they were not there. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we need actually to know, they, they actually need to know that the electorate are wiser than before. In, in, with the issue of uh, uh, selection of the CECs and the county executive, uh, you, you know, ca cabinet and so forth, mm -hmm. we need professionalism. And I will say this, that that will be their downfall. That if they, they, they give credit to friends, mm -hmm and uh, tribalism and, and, and nepotism, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, be, like now if Dr. Jenga go, come, uh, become the governor, Bwana uh, Oguna here is no longer a person in, in the, in, I, I had the other, is it yesterday where I had um, uh, Kiraito Murugi mm -hmm. uh, dissolving and sacking all the staffs. Honestly, how do you how do you sack all the staffs in an in an institution that has existed for five years? Mm -hmm. How do you where is the continuity? You know, and, and, and really this is something that we need to follow in the constitution and the civil service policies. Mm -hmm. Like me, I, if if you go to the office and sack everyone. And you be, that means you actually don't have the history and what uh, you, you know who, uh, where you have where you have uh, where you are, you, you, your predecessor mm -hmm. has uh, has reached. And I think, as my friend said here, it's the issue of continuity, professionalism. Who is the minister of education? Does that minister of education has the prerequisite? You know, who is the minister of tourism? Do they have the requisite? How about the staffs? Do you use the the service board? Uh, the county service board, or rather, is it the county service uh, 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 service board, mm -hmm. where where all the names are vetted, and they look for the qualifications, mm -hmm. and they look for all these things that are required before someone is hired. Again, do we have a tenure of office? All right. Of civil servants, mm -hmm. because it is also worrying that if I enter into the gov uh, county today, within five years, chances are I might I might not be there. And I think this is something that we need actually to uh, reinforce. All right. So these are the issues we'll be watching as uh, the second term of devolution takes shape. Gentlemen, we have to wind up. Let me give you the, cl the closing comments, uh, Dr. Njenga. What right. are you expecting um, at the end of the five years? Thank you. I'm expecting term? professionalism. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting proper accountability of finances. I'm expecting public participation of the Monainchi at, at, at the grassroots right. level. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting uh, where, uh, a situation whereby the governor will not suffer from this, I'm calling Nairobi syndrome, mm -hmm. where we elect them and they vanish to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We only meet them in the street of Nairobi. I'm also expecting where the governor will also be open to the electorate. Uh, share, share your phone numbers, your, your phone number. Be reachable. You know, uh, let, uh, I'm also expecting where the governors will bring water mm -hmm. to the people, services to the people, will improve education, will improve the sanitation and, and, and water, will improve the, 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 the local Mwanainchi, and especially the, uh, the uh, Mamamboga. They are struggling. Imagine uh, put doubling the levy of business. Mm -hmm. 
you, you, you know, a small signboard, you charge that over 10,000, right. you know, painting or repainting of a, of a section of, a, of your house, you are charged a lot of money. Let the governors be sensitive to the electorate. Mm -hmm. That is all we need. All right. And that is my parting right. shot. And we will be watching uh, Brian, your closing comments very briefly. Okay. I expect there's what we call the economical plan. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting governors to adapt to a more producing economical platform mm -hmm. than a consuming one. When we speak of good markets, when we build markets, but there are no produce for our people mm -hmm. to take to these mm -hmm. markets, mm -hmm. that's more of consumption. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd also expect people have a lot of faith in the just elected governors. Mm -hmm. I hope they have the vision. I hope they'll have the energy to stand the strong wave that I'll, will shake them up. Mm -hmm. Because it, one hand, we can say that as a people, one hand, we can say that we are suffering from government neglect. But on the other hand, we can say that we are suffering from self-neglect because of our people. We have not woken up. We have not bringing people to account. We want to sit and wait for it to be delivered mm -hmm. at our doorsteps. It mm -hmm. is our responsibility. It is our joint responsibility to really make sure that devolution works for us as it should work for us. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking to us. Brian Aguna is a political researcher and analyst as well as a governance expert, Dr. Solomon Jenga, here in the early morning edition of Kivumbi 2017, discussing the expectations of the electorate on this second term of devolution. Remember, on our question of the day this morning, we're asking you, term two of devolution has begun. How have you benefited from devolution? Do give us your thoughts, views, and the county you are writing us from using the hashtag Kivumbi 2017. We take a, a short break here after the dawn debate. Do stay with us when we come back. We get into the newsroom discussion, taking a look at how the media has covered or handled some of the top stories this week. Do stay with us.